David? Uh, yes. David, I think it's beef time. It's beef time. Shortly after arriving home from the chase scene, uh, Amy starts to tell her husband, George, right? Played by Joseph yep. Lee. Mm-hmm. Uh, she starts to tell her about her life, and then he cuts her off and says, hey, like, you got to start focusing on the positive. Um, when I watched this, I actually thought this was very bad and unhealthy behavior. And then there was Amy, this guy. Before you spiral, I'm going to have to stop right there. I think that, in general, one of the things that we see in these people's lives, both... Uh, Amy and Danny is how the people around them kind of invalidate them in various ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned from, uh, you you know, taking classes from uh, these, this relationship council is called the Gottmans. I don't know if you've ever heard of them, Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's this, this concept called the, the stress relieving conversation. And the idea is that every day after work or whatever, you have like a five to 15 minute interaction with your, spouse mm-hmm. or a loved one uh where they can kind of just tell you what is going on with them and it's like a it's like a way for them to feel validated it's a way to connect and so yeah. on and so forth and she's like starting to kind of have that and this guy um just just cuts her off you know this guy uh george just kind of cuts her off right right away um and it foretold i think a toxic aspect of the relationship where he doesn't really listen to her needs mm-hmm. uh and and pay much attention to like what she's going through uh, what did you think, Sadant, about the relationship dynamic between uh, Amy and George? Yeah, like you said, it's a moment of, I guess, toxic positivity. Um, yeah, yeah, great. No, term. that's like, like I think George being introduced in that specific context is really interesting. You immediately see him through the lens of, all right, this this thing has happened and this pressure has built up, and Amy needs an outlet to relieve it, and. George is definitely not that outlet, not that person for her. And it's interesting you talk about that, um, that you know, uh, method in couples therapy. Um, I, I've seen something similar posited just on Twitter, which is, you know, the best place to get advice. Um, but in this case, it was actually good advice where uh, you as a couple can avoid a lot of, you know, arguments and problems if if you just figure out at the beginning of a conversation is this a problem solving conversation or is this a venting conversation mm-hmm. yeah and Absolutely. when those two things clash uh when amy's trying to have a venting conversation and george turns it into a problem solving one um you immediately see like the way she like shuts down and the way it kind of you know builds a little further for her thanks babe <laughs> So yeah, fuck George. <laughs> oh wow, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think he acquits himself particularly well in the first two episodes, for sure. But uh, you know, we always appreciate your advice, Fumi. You get the sense of the tension between the two of them, right? There's like, especially yeah. when there's like an inter-class thing going on. You get the sense that Ali Wong's character probably didn't come from money, whereas. Yeah. George's family probably was relatively wealthy. And so obviously the grandmother is going to want certain things for her granddaughter that like are massive expenditures. Uh, And this can create a lot of tension. There's a lot of judging going on, a lot of things that aren't said going on. I really thought that dynamic was captured very well. Even though you only get like glimpses of these, you know, supporting characters, they're all so well-rounded right from the get-go and also well-performed and so well detailed in in what they wear whether it's you know the the enormous amounts of makeup or the flashy sort of gaudy things that fumi's wearing mm-hmm. or uh george's ridiculous little cap with the like you know brim turned up and i am i wrong or was he wearing like a, a fanny pack at one point i that could just be me projecting on how much i decided <laughs> i don't recall that i don't recall that yeah but hey nothing wrong with the asian dad fanny pack sit on so um, what can I say? I'm just really like racist, I guess. I don't know. You're gonna, yeah. uh, you know, wait one day. So 30 years from now, Sinatha Laka is gonna be seen wearing, <laughs> seen wearing a fanny pack. It's gonna happen. <laughs> Set your watch to it. Set your watch to it. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it's just convenient, man. It's just convenient. Okay. Look, I think it's just it's it's. Uh, you familiar with the the tweet about how, um, you know when. When you dislike someone, everything they do is annoying. Like if someone tweets, I like yeah. soup, you're like, mm-hmm, I bet you do. 
Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I bet you wear fanny packs, George. Like, I, I think outside of the context of fanny packs, <laughs> outside of the, context, the context of George, of George fanny, fanny packs. Yeah, fanny packs. Yeah, yeah, fine. like yeah. Batman wears fanny packs. You know, yeah. So I think it's cool. Now, could tell my papa, one on tang, how I'll build a big house. <laughs> Danny's relationship to his family. Yeah. Uh, it's complicated. You, you kind of find out during the course of these two episodes that Danny, uh, he and his family used to run a hotel, is yeah. my sense, right? And Danny helped to facilitate his cousin Isaac uh, selling, I think it was baby formula or something along those lines out of the, yeah. out of the hotel. <laughs> Counterfeit baby formula? Who would have thought that was a thing? And uh, and you get a sense that because of that, they got into legal trouble. And like, if you're an immigrant, it's like really serious to get into legal trouble. It like jeopardizes your entire, um, you know, uh, immigrant status. And so you get a sense that because of that, they had to like sell the hotel and move on. And that's why his parents are back in, I think, South Korea. But the conversation that Steven Yun has with his uh, his parents is so similar to many of the conversations I have had with my parents. Because like, uh, there are some families out there, okay, who they can be very honest with each. I've seen I've seen them depicted on uh, TV shows and films. I've seen them talked about on TikTok. <laughs> I I wish you, you know have, you have heard tell. <laughs> I've heard tell. I've heard tell. I will never understand, but there are certain families out there who when they talk with their parents, they can have an honest conversation about what's going on in their lives, right? Mm-hmm. Um I don't recall the last time I have ever had anything like that because when you're talking, you know, when I am talking with my parents, it's always both parties want to represent that things going in their life are just fine. They don't want mm-hmm. the other person to worry about the other party. Um, and of course it always comes with like in the case of Stephen Young's character, his parents saying, Hey, you should marry a nice girl from church. Definitely something I've heard approximately 600 times in my life. Um, so I, I related a lot with what was going on there, but I think Stephen Young's character, Danny is in the parlance of our times, a loser. And I just want to, I just want to emphasize that like, um, for many Asian families, for many immigrant families, you know, being in Stephen Yun's position carries a second layer of shame, yeah. um, which is that people in his position are supposed to be taking care of their parents. They're not supposed to be a drag on their parents. They're not supposed to be like hurting their parents in any way. Yeah. Um, they're supposed to be taking care of them, improving their lives. And that's kind of the opposite of what Stephen Yun's character does. I've been busting my ass ever since mom and dad lost the motel. And you're going to sit here and gamble? It serves... A very interesting plot function because you immediately know just from his first like FaceTime conversation with his mom and I think his dad is also there that oh this is the like the big thing weighing on his mind the fact that he wants to bring his parents back to the United States and from there on out every decision he makes is going to be geared towards that it's going to have something to do with his family with his parents even if you know it they don't come up directly in a conversation and, um, you know, you, you see the way that even though he's like a little frustrated on the call, he, like you said, wants to, you know, give the impression that yeah, everything's fine. You know, I'm, I'm working on something, you know, I'm going to have you guys back, that sort of thing. You really think you should be lecturing me when you're the one who let Isaac go to shady shit at the motel? That's why we lost in the first place. He is so good in this show at capturing the feeling and capturing the appearance of having lived with anger and lived with frustration and self-loathing for so long. Because, you know, for, for a lot of actors, anger is something that, you know, you build to immediately right before it happens. Anger is something that happens in the moment. It, as George would say, it's, it's a transitory state. Um, but it's, you, you can tell, like, that this is something that has just, like, seeped into his bones over years and years. And just every movement, the way he carries himself. Um, but yeah, you can see it in his eyes, like just what he's carrying around with him. Yeah, there's a great shame. Um, there's a big chip on his shoulder. You know, one of the ways that... I, I have this theory, Siddhanth. Um, Go for it. And I, I don't I don't want to accidentally slight you. You know, maybe you've used this. Mm-hmm. Let, me, let me put it this way. Let, let, me, let me try to say this in a, the most innocuous way possible. Um, he calls that person on the phone when he's trying to buy that place. And he's like, 
hey, I own a very successful construction company. Um, I have a lot of money. You know, you know uh, please call me back because I want to buy the blah, blah, blah. I run a very successful residential construction company, and I'm very serious about buying. People in positions of power don't need to reiterate that they're in positions of power. That's yeah. kind of the fundamental thing, right? Yeah. Um, you don't need to say, I have a big and successful thing. If it was big and successful, you wouldn't need to say it was big and successful because people would already know about it. You don't mm -hmm. see Mario Bello's character saying, I have a big and successful hardware place, you know, because it's like everyone already knows. It's like he has like the Lowe's of this world or whatever it is, right? Like whatever. So it's like the person, the CEO of Lowe's is saying, I have a big and successful hardware company, you know, like th yeah. that doesn't make any sense. Um, and so the people who, th th that's kind of always been my theory is like, if, if you are actually the thing, you don't need to say you are the thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, and he is the kind of person that feels like he needs to say he is a thing because he's not actually the thing, you know. Um, so, anyway, and and he immediately follows that up with one of the best scenes of like stress eating I've ever seen. Um, and in an era where Brendan Fraser won an Oscar for stress eating um, in in that in that movie that shall not be named. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, no, I just the, think like the mummy, the mummy three tomb of the dragon emperor. I think you're referring to. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You know him and you know the the dragon Jet, emperor. Him just and Jet Li chowing down. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, like uh, Stephen Yun eating Burger King, just shoving it in his mouth and like almost choking on it is like the way. Again, the way he does it, like yeah, I'm sure he's hungry too, but it's just like oh, I gotta get this down. I'm feeling all this external like pressure and I need something to push it down and for some people food is that thing. Hey everyone, David Chen here. Thank you so much for watching that video from Decoding TV. If you want to get an audio version of the show, all you got to do is go to podcast.decodingtv.com and if you want to support what we do, get ad-free episodes of the podcast and also bonus episodes of the podcast, go to decodingtv.com and become a paid member. Of course, you can also like and subscribe for more. We appreciate it. Thanks. See you later.